Samuel Japane is the chief birding expert at the Outpost Lodge in the Kruger National Park. His passion for birds has completely transformed his life. Wow, the very tiny bird right here. It can mimic more than 50 different species. It's this one, Sabordlank. And the gray hornbill, Tokas Nasotas, bird number 457. I love this bird. Hear it. A married spotted wood dove. It's a sad song. Do you know what it says? It says, My father is dead. My mother is dead. I am not happy. No one loves me. It's a sad song. And I can hear another one. The gray-headed sparrow. Some bird species are listed in numbers by Robert and Newman's. So I usually say they, they are numbers. Southern gray-headed sparrow is 804. And I can hear the long-belled chrome That one. Eight. Yeah, it's long-belled chrome So that one is a resident. It's found here the whole uh, the, the whole year. The Makoleke region of South Africa's Kruger National Park is rich in biodiversity with over 785 different species of birds. This is where Samuel Japani, a game ranger with an encyclopedic knowledge of birds, works. I love to listen to them with their calls, and I can identify with their calls. Don't be shot. But there is a bird that continues to elude him. I'm still looking forward to try to find the marsh wobbler. Uh, it's a migration bird. Birds that are coming from far, like uh, Europe, they fly for long distance, more than 10,000 kilometers. It's a little bird, looks like this one. Tourist. Yeah. yeah. They can cross even the border without showing the visa or passport without paying even a single cent. <laughs> this tells me that the birds are free animals, as they can go wherever they like, as long as if they have energy to do so, just fly. A broad-built roller, 450, the migration bird uh, in tri Africa. <laughs> Mev Stalin. It was called the long tailed Stalin. Good afternoon, everyone. So, my name is Samuel. So, you are more than welcome to this afternoon safari. I just want to know your special interest at the back. Well, uh Animals in general. We have seen uh, some lions before okay. and uh, cheetahs. Okay. We have not seen so many elephants. I will try to find the elephant that you, uh, you were spoken about. Are you happy if I can show you even the smaller things? Because the bush is not only for the big things, 
a uh, lot of people are missing a lot of interesting stuff, especially the smaller things. I'm interested in the migratory birds. Are there any here? Yes, we have a lot of them. We can find even the rabbit, uh, marsh warbler. It's around here at this time of day. Eh? Lovely so if we could see that. Definitely. The moment I take my guest to the game drive, I feel excited because I love the bush. After I heard from my guest what they want to see, then I start making a plan to take them to the place where I expected to see something there that they have mentioned. Some guests were here to see Big Five, but I try the level of my best to invite them to the new world of birds. Bird number 772, they eat the ticks and they like to drink uh, uh, blood. When animal is wounded, they drink the blood. So it can take more than 400 ticks every day. Wow. The gray, the gray at the bush rock, the, that big tree in the lower. It's this one. The grey-headed bush rock. We call it a spoke fuel because it can head than seen. So we're lucky to see it crossing. Samuel works at the outpost for six weeks and then goes home for two weeks' leave. <laughs> A lot of people who know me some years back, they don't believe if I'm doing this. they completely uh, shocked. How did you know these smaller things? Even on his journey home, his enthusiasm for small things is contagious. Oh, the one flying, I saw it. Oh, uh, when the giraffe's feeding, it disturbed some locusts or butterflies. So the fructal drongo catches them. On his way home, Samuel stops by the school his children go to and where his passion for birding began. This is the school, Makakule, where I used to work as a security guard in 2006 up until 2012. So I used to stay here. The school built this room for me. I was working here day and night. Yeah, it was tough. Samuel has been invited to give the children a talk on his journey from security guard to bird specialist with the hopes that it will inspire them to be young conservationists. Hi, I'm Mintiva Pela. One day when I slept, it came to me as a dream with a lot of questions. How can you change your life? In the middle of the night, I waked up. The same question was still ringing. In the morning, when the sun rise, 
It arised with my answer. The answer was very much challenging for me. Rumi se nirna tamul, tamulo aiku. Loko what don't ask me any ani. Uta chicha bito mizawe. Hekarwalo ani kesi tamani tuamuno luanga don't ask me any ani. Ivan lava vatira kuruga ano teka ku Ivan lava ani vatira ku isiari. I wanted to give up, but there was a push. Do it, do it. So I continue collecting a lot of newspapers, and I even started making a list of different species of birds in my village. One day, two South African women from wilderness safaris arrived at the school. They were doing a project called Children in the Wilderness, and their main goal was to get children interested in nature and preserving wildlife. So I opened them the main gate, and I showed them the principal's office. I went back in my workplace in the main gate, while I was sitting there, I started meditating. Why you do not ask the two ladies about your dream? I love that book. So those ladies uh, played the very most important role in my life. They have um, put light in my future. Then I started focusing in my two books and uh, I was reading the name of the bed, the scientific name sometimes, and the number. Say, Ilish Shinyan Shakona, Mashi Wobla. Tunyan told me to one of two. To Kotaku Echenita Shinyani, Sotal, Minoti, or one of Noti. A little one in a Shinyan, the Shingam Gubani, my two Muguban, Muguban, who are not to us a second go. Numen de la one. Hey. <laughs> I still remember one time when I came with a, a CD that I have to put it in uh, in the computer so I could practice the best sound. So I was very much uh, amazed by the way how he were able to identify the bed calls. Se loko ni on faka rumwa loko ni rikaya. Ani fana ni ni vekelele shia shia DVD ka TV. Sikuro sungula ku ende trolo. Ni vzerili ngamu na vana ni ku anila wiku diste bi wano kombela. Ewe ni kia injwe mina ni ngena ni ku nalo munu hata kwa tanila wa mingu vzeku ani bizi. I said, remember one lady came to me and said, no, have you seen what my Japanese is doing? That guy is running mad. Have you ever seen what he's doing? He's just moving around all over, moving around with a book, singing, singing like a bass. I said, no, <laughs> he's very much fond of bass. So let us wait and see how far he will go. not <laughs> When I was still young, seven to eight, the time when I saw 
bird flying and having a lot of questions. Why they flew? What they ate? Where did they come from? So from that time, I started loving them, but uh, it ended from that time up until when I dreamed about them. But after his dream, Samuel became so obsessed with birds, it started interfering with his sleep. At night, I was giving my wife a lot of stress. I could wake up and start listening to birds call at night. But uh, now, she's happy because I'm doing it. We are blessed. We have seven children. My firstborn is Amukelan Mishak, Japan. <laughs> My second born is California, Japan. My third born is Pisselan Victoria. My fourth born is uh, Moses Gurula, Japan. My fifth born is Felicia, Japan. My sixth born is Tlautelo, Japan. My last born is Kepshi, Japan. And she's cute. She can tell you more than seven different species of birds with their scientific name. But she's still in grade R. She knows a woodland kingfisher that is Halcyon senegalensis. It's coming from Senegal and intra Africa. It's bird number 433. So, you can see the Wow, good. Eh. Red. Red cat ribbon chat. Wow, good. <laughs> Red. Red cat the ribbon chat. Red cat the ribbon chat. Wow. Ah, what don't don't. What? Fly away. Fly away. Fly away. 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 My bed. The devil is there. The devil is there. Wow, 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 what are you doing? Hello, Kaina. I'm not lucky. I'm not with a growing family to feed, he was concerned. I dreamed about owning three donkeys. So I spoke to my mother. She said to me, long time ago before I was born, they had three donkeys. With the last money that I get from my job, I decided to buy donkeys. Then I started collecting some <laughs> firewood, uh, river sand, water helping people in the community. By that time, I was getting something on the table. When time goes, I realized that there was a competition. Some people started buying donkeys and their wagons. Sometimes I was spending the whole month without getting a single client. So I started worried and tried to find a job. Then I ended up by getting the security Got job. Samuel's son took over the donkey business, and after his dream about birds, he approached the Makuleka Community Properties Association, the CPA, 
to ask them to help him fund his studies to become a game ranger specializing in birds. So I said to them, my dream is to learn birds and become a bird specialist. Could you please assist me in offering me to go to do such a course? They said to me, they should not take me as a single person to go to do the course because the money is not for theirs, it's for the community. So I went back home, studying my beds by myself for a period of four, seven months. People were discouraging me. Sometimes, somehow, I was thinking maybe, as people are saying, I look like if I'm running mad. Are they true? Ah, let me continue doing my stuff. They ended up by advertising the post of two guides. The day of interview arrived, and I was competing with the young stars aged 25 to 30. They were from different universities. They were cleverer than me. Yeah. Uh, the interviewer heard the bird calling. He was quickly asking me a question, what bird was. I quickly said to him, Chisport Batis, bird number 701. So he looked at me and said, excellent. There started a very big argument. People were complaining about my age because by the time I was 46, in two weeks after the interview, I got a call from the office informing me to pack everything to go to do the course. The Makuleke people also had to fight for their own territory. The land that Samuel works on once belonged to their ancestors, and their struggle to reclaim it was long and hard. The Makuleke people were staying there since 1884. They were staying there with their animals. They were staying there with the fauna and flora. They were even conservationists. They were taking care of the conservation on their own. 1969 was the hardest time of the Makuleke community. They were forcibly removed from their own ancestral land. Apartheid laws were inflicted because people just, there was just an announcement which came to them through the government officials to say, on this date, you must be ready to be removed. A lot of people, the main mainly, were working elsewhere in the industrial side. It was the defenseless women and children who were remaining there. And those who are not going to, to, to agree the resettlement, they are going to be shot dead. They were promised that. And of course, on gunpoint, people were loaded into trucks. The hardest part of it is that when you were loaded into the truck, the officials will put your house into fire. When we arrived here, there was no infrastructure. People were given the tents, the soldiers' tents, to, and given the ultimatum that in seven days, they must have constructed a dwelling place at least. In seven days, how is that possible? But the community did manage to rebuild. And after South Africa's transition to democracy, began the legal battle the struggle to reclaim their land. Kruger National Park did not change the status of the land. It left it for conservation. If conservation is going to yield some income for us, we are going to use it at the very same level. The land claim was successful, 
and is now for the benefit of the whole Makuleke community. The Lodge Sam works at is one of three owned by the community and 68 members are employed within the park. This area is owned by the Makuleke community. The boundary is Silifufu and Ilipopo, 26,000 hectares. And it's a lot of beds. It is regarded as it's 80 percent biodiversity of the Kruger National Park. So coming to birds, it's a home of birds. So we are looking to find this one. Let's hope, because it's a good area for them. This one is yours. Slippery. Come on, come on. Yo, I can hear another migration one. The willow wobbler is calling. The wood wobbler? Yeah, willow, willow. Willow wobbler? Yes. Okay. I think it should be a little bit deck that side. Yeah, it's an alarm call. Something like a predator nearby. Should be a leopard or lion or bird of prey like a, a, a African crowned eagle because they kill them. So working here for me, it's a, a privilege. It's a home of bed, and it's my land too. When I started doing this bedding, I was old. Uh, roughly 46 years old, and uh, the coming March I'll be reaching 51. According to my understanding, age is just a number. You can do whatever you want at any age. Especially if you have a dream to become something so you need to focus and hope that you will be that thing one day. Mm -hmm.